Hey everybody, let's paint. Okay, us. Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, hello Bob. Hello Chris. Hello Leon. Welcome to my channel. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna mention the colors I have here. Just one second. Closing some windows here on my screen I got titanium white I got chrome yellow camium orange camium red uh, okay sorry boy if I mispronounce this name is Kynocridon rose which is pretty close to a lizard and crimson raw umber and black okay I use, uh, like uh, I mean, all the time I use these brushes, synthetic brushes. I got round, flat. Okay. Let's start sketching a bit, okay? I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna use a bit of raw umber and a touch of linseed oil. Just a touch of linseed oil. I want to. I want to just spread the paint more easily. I don't want too much paint because just this just the beginning. Just sketch. When I sketch, for me everything is about measuring. Okay. Okay. Just one second. One second. I just want to check out the size of this. Is gonna be the top. Uh, the size of the head. The whole head. I can place the whole head here. The face here. I'm squinting down my eyes and trying just to see, see a simple shape, something like that. And for the hands, just something like that. Okay. Obviously, what I'm trying is just simplification. I see a complex, a complex form, and just simplify to as simple as I can, I can possible. I do like, a, you know, a square, a triangle. Simple, just primary shapes. Okay, um, yeah, I think that's okay. The top of the head, maybe I gotta move the eyes. You know, it's gonna be like maybe too small. Maybe the top of the head. I got more space here on my canvas. I got like a couple of inches, but obviously I cannot move my camera that much. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a good position here. Like this is gonna be the center line, and this is gonna be for the eyes. Now the eyebrows on top. What I usually do, I measure, you know, from the eyebrows to the nose. This is from the Loomis method, from the the nose to the chin. In this case, she has a really short nose, and because her face is still tilting forward, it's tilted forward, there is a change on those measurements. Okay, hello. Hello, uh, H. Surf. Hello, Jim. Jim Ewing. Okay. Hello, Monique. Hello, Upward. Hello, Angel. Hello, Grip. Uh, oh, thank you, Greg. Hello, Phillips. Hello, Nilu. Hello, Jonas. Okay, hello, Sharon. Hello, Mary. Hello, Intesar, in, Intesar, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, I gotta, I, gotta, I wanna say sorry if I mispronounce the names. I usually don't say anything because definitely I'm mispronouncing so many names. I mean, that you're not gonna listen. You're not gonna hear me saying sorry because of that, because it's kind of impossible for me to pronounce all those names. You know? Okay, I'm just sketching and... Uh, you know, I got the photograph next to my canvas, which makes things really easy for me, like... The top of this finger is a line, I'm checking this and that's pretty good. The bottom of the chin. 
when we have this kind of a rule when we have a background that's pretty dark we usually gotta paint first the background that's gonna help us to judge all the other values on the painting I'm gonna just use raw umber okay. a bit of linseed oil just to, to spread the paint a bit faster okay let me see Hello Greg, yeah. hello London, hola, okay, uh, let's see, Everything darker here. Check out one side of the knuckle here that I see here, aligned up. I think it's aligned with one side of the face and the other side of the, the thumb that this has to be kind of here. It's aligned, you know, with the left side of the face too. I'm going to erase a bit here. I'm squinting and trying to see some a negative shape a negative shape here that would be something like for example this okay look at that i'm just thinking that it's just a flat shape This is just raw umber, okay? If somebody has any question, just let me know. Okay, now everything is orange. Okay, uh, you know, I got uh, my mom here, she was just walking by here and she saw the painting and she said like, well, looks like you love orange and red. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought yeah, it's kind of obvious by now. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm thinking okay about the value that is here. It's obviously it's lighter this area as it goes to let's say this portion here where we see the eyelids. It's not as bright as this orange. And uh, the forehead. Okay, the lightest light here obviously are on the on the thumbs, the light on the thumbs and here between the fingers, yeah. And the brightest red that's gonna be here on the hand, okay? It looks like there's a bright red here too. Like here below the eyes. You just gotta be careful. You know, I'm thinking right now, hey, you know, you got bright red here. Okay, uh, definitely this one here is going to be the brightest red, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Now, the second red that would be here. Okay, about this area of the face. I think I could paint it just with cadmium orange. What about that? Just cadmium orange and add some lights with you know, chrome yellow. 
Ok. It could work. Ok, I got, we see a lot of light on the neck. I see light on the chin. It looks like it's the same light. Ok, in order to make the, 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 the chain come forward, I gotta just knock down the light here. Yeah. I'm just speaking out loud what I'm thinking right now, ok? Ok, uh, what about the background? You know, it's just black, looks like just black. Yeah, but what else, you know, you see here, there is some like a dark red. Or maybe it's a dark green, based on checking those, this uh, hair sleeves you know that's green yeah, I see some looks like some kind of greenish color on the hair here the light on the hair here okay yeah that's good maybe then I could make this area here a, a dark green which is gonna add more contrast with the reddish color on, on, on the hand on the hands yeah yeah okay yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna start just first oh first I'm gonna pick up a clean brush and then I'm gonna paint just with this cadmium orange just here for drawing basically what I do I squint down my eyes and check out just simple shapes okay just simple shapes and I copy those shapes just flat shapes and always check out I check out positive and negative shapes okay even here for example that looks kind of obvious this shape here the shape that's here okay the shape that I see here all this area that's a let's say a negative shape a positive shape that would be this the neck and the hands yeah okay now the eyes uh, let's see when it's about the eyes what I see uh, I'm squinting right now and what I see is this just like a dark shape here I see that okay and then I need a clean brush to pick up some orange again I'm gonna mix orange with a touch of a touch of uh, kinacrid on rose okay I'm gonna say a lizard crimson okay because it's pretty close, pretty close. It's just easier to to say greens a listening than kinakri than kinakri than rose. But you will know, okay, which color I'm using. Okay, don't tell anyone. Okay. Hello Christopher. <laughs> Hello Gary. Hello Sylvia. Okay. The only thing that I'm thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna have problems with is trying to keep this orangey color clean. Since everything is wet the darker color here is gonna get into the face. You gotta be careful with that. When you see that I got this camium orange, and as, uh, as as soon as I keep this in touch with this 
raw umber I got some greenish color okay which I think is gonna be good since I got a lot of red on the face having some green is gonna add some contrast but a subtle green you know a green that's there but that is not showing that hey I'm here just is working to make the red glow Sorry if you hear some music, some of my neighbor, neighbors, because tomorrow there's a huge party here on this camp, condom where I live. And tomorrow, no, Sunday, and they have a story from today, like it's trying to do some preparations. Yeah. Oh, hello, Tina. Hello Christopher Jackson. Oh Jonas is saying, is asking me how much time do you roughly spend in the blocking in stage on the part or do you like to stay in one particular area first? No, I always uh, love to just work like everything at one at once. You know, the face, then the hands. Especially when I work on the face, let's say that I'm not gonna say that's easier, but the relationship is gonna be between the eyes, nose, and mouth. Just you know, but when we have another element, another object like now the hands, then when it could be become a little bit tricky. Why? Because usually what happens is that we end up with bigger hands or smaller hands, and you gotta check out from the very beginning the relationship between the size of the the face and the hands. Okay, if I find something like, for example, the alignment, this very good alignment be between the one side of the, the hand and this, the face and here, that's pretty good, you know. Because I got something, some relationship to check out always the, the width of the hands and the width of the face. And another thing that's pretty good that is that the shape here that is just pretty simple, it looks like a uh, square like rhomboid shape and that's pretty good and what I see right now is just like everything is about orange and red uh, it's not about that of course there are always a lot of uh, values and color variations it looks just just like red and orange but you, if you uh, zoom in the photograph you're gonna see some green here and that's pretty clear okay and at the same time you're gonna see some green here now where is that green coming from I don't know uh, maybe it's just that everything around is green it's a dark green the light is obviously is, is like a fire like yellowish yeah, but this green Maybe that's the kind of the ambient light because this light is just here, spreading to the face. But it's just kind of, let's say it is pretty strong here, but it's, it's not not strong enough to illuminate everything around. Yeah, I that's the logic of uh, thinking about the light and the shadows. Hello, Nolan. Okay, Sylvia. Yeah. Okay. Okay, one thing that maybe for sure is gonna happen that I'm gonna I'm gonna add more and more paint in this area. Uh, and I'm thinking that to get just this really glow, to make this really glow and and keep it clean. 
I already have, you know, you see this color here. I already have some raw amber for my drawing stage, for my blocking stage. And definitely this is gonna get mixed with the color that I just putting down right now. Okay, for a uh, darker shadow here, I'm gonna mix a lizard crimson, a lizard crimson, and cadmium red. Red. I think this color is gonna be pretty good here. Okay, I'm gonna darken up the background. I'm gonna use black. It's just black, pure black. Okay, and a touch of yellow chrome. Touch of yellow a lot of contrast here <laughs> what I'm gonna be doing is cleaning with paper towel a lot because in order to get the really high contrast I gotta I what I'm doing is just you know painting with pure black and yeah, definitely that color is gonna get into my hand. Okay. I'm mixing this black with cameo red and I'm gonna paint the hair. Okay. Hello Lily. Thinking, just thinking. Mm. Okay, I'm just thinking that if this contrast, uh, you know, is good enough, or if I could maybe just add a touch of red here, maybe a lizard green some. Uh, this is something that I'm gonna definitely gonna do. Add some touches of a lizard green some and some dark green to create some contrast. Okay. Uh, the thing is about the pure black I have here. Okay, I should keep it like that, just pure black. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about the light on the face? Is the light enough? Well, definitely it's not. You know, I need to. I need some chrome yellow, definitely on the face. I don't see that on the photograph, but I think I'm gonna need to add some. Uh, uh, like highlights like like that 
Okay. No, I don't see the highlight on the on the on the photograph. I said, but I think uh, that that's gonna you know create more volume on the face if I add some lights and highlights. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, 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 okay. I add this highlight here. This is almost white. Almost white. That means that I gotta clean this first, and that's gonna be chrome yellow and white. Okay. Now, for the fingers, basically I just see red, pure red, this finger, and then goes down here, and then this one, which I think I'm gonna add maybe a, a touch of white, and a touch of yellow. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, not so sure yet. I'm gonna. Uh, okay. This is just. Uh, cameo orange, I'm mixing with this color here that it has, this is kind of mixture between cameo orange and alizarin crimson. I'm gonna use this for this area. Okay, and a little bit of yellow. Okay, I got a little bit of black here in this yellow. That's okay, that's what I want. Maybe, I'm just thinking to knock down this color a bit. And the black that is here on the palette, on the, on the yellow, maybe that's gonna help me to knock down this color and separate this one from this one. Okay, now I need a dark red. I'm mixing here cadmium red and raw umber and a touch of alizarin crimson. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. I got. I need this darker red. F f paint the fingers here. I'm squinting. And basically, I'm just, you know, painting one, two, three, just like that. And now here the same. You know, simplifying to a brush, a couple of brush strokes. Okay. Now I need some pure red. I see some pure red here. And here. Okay. I don't see this red like glowing that much. And um. I'm going to use a palette knife. I want to see if I paint this really thick. The red is going to glow, or maybe I'm going to need to add a touch of white. I was thinking first to add just a touch of white and yellow. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to need at least a touch of a touch of yellow chrome yellow here then I need then I need to darken up the fingers a bit more maybe a bit more it's too dark I think yeah, but if I got the contrast, maybe it's okay. I'm gonna leave it there for a few minutes. 
need to get used to this darker contrast I got this, I got this, 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 this around here. In order to place this, this brush stroke, I'm checking out here, here, and here. Okay. Yeah, I have to clean here. I'm, gonna, I'm wi wiping off a bit of paint. Hello, Paddy. Mixing some raw umber and a little and crimson. in here for the ear I remember one of the first time times maybe when I was trying to paint something like with really high contrast and I couldn't get it because usually we are afraid of darker colors I couldn't get you know, the, the contrast and it was like a, it was pretty easy to end up with muddy colors uh, because as you go darker and darker and when the painting is wet it's pretty close and you're afraid to blend because when we blend we can get something you know of this here and definitely that's gonna happen definitely I mean I, I'm gonna it's gonna, it's gonna happen like gonna repaint the edge again maybe a couple of times because we have to always work on edges we need softer edges to create volume okay you know you remember sometimes just stopping before adding those darks and letting the painting dry okay. but one exercise is always painting a la prima because you have to deal with mixtures it's like there's there is no no way to escape of uh, mixing the color on the canvas not just on the palette and that was always pretty scary 
like today for me you know it's just it's just like I gotta continue painting painting and I was still thinking you know kind of getting trying to avoid getting close here and trying to check out again and again the width of the face mm. the only good thing that could happen if I ended up with something greenish here around okay is that the center of the face if I keep this clean is gonna pop and the greenish color on, on the on, uh, on the contours of the face is gonna create the, the illusion that the form is turning because that color is gonna become kind of grayish you know it's because of the mixture of this raw umber with cadmium orange we got some greenish color and that works pretty good in order to knock down the orange and that helps when we want to create illusion of depth that's what we always want okay I'm gonna blend a bit okay just one second A, a pose like this with this kind of light uh, I was thinking that I was always wanted to paint something like this but I'm going to have a live model but it, it was it's pretty hard because on a studio on a, you need a lot of light to see your painting and at the same time you need to create you know a, a pose like this or this kind of lighting you need a lot of shadow that means there is not too much light on this place just this light here and it's pretty difficult to have both a lot of light for your your painting and a lot of shadow on the models you know face Okay, I'm blending a bit. This is a round brush number zero. Look at the hair. I, I love these brushes at this specific stage. I can just press here the base and I got something pretty close to a fan, a tiny fan, fan brush. Okay, on the face, the lightest light, I think, no doubt, is just the chin. Eh? I'm gonna mix here this chrome yellow and white. I need more chrome yellow. Just cream, cream uh, clean chrome yellow. about that okay okay I'm thinking right now this is gonna be my lightest light here on the face okay okay then I'm gonna add a touch of cadmium orange and this is gonna be let's say the second light on the face I'm thinking about values values here okay they say that this is this one the other one is gonna be this I mean not exactly this one but what I'm trying to say that you need to think you know in terms that you gotta always bigger values care with a lot of values there okay 
Okay, now I move up here. Okay, what you shouldn't do is this you lay down this color and then you lay down the same color here. Okay, think always in terms of va a value scale and in terms that you need all the values here that this is you know a big puzzle and every brush stroke uses a small puzzle that you lay down you put down here and every brush stroke has a different value and color it could be slightly just tiny bit different but it's different okay now definitely I mean there's gonna be a lot of repetition but I'm just telling you all just to think in terms of that just to understand that we need to make a difference between you know color and values because it's pretty common that we pick up one color you say this one and we think hey that's pretty good and we put it here we put it here we put it here okay I mean no there's gonna be a difference maybe it's the difference is not too much maybe we cannot see the difference yeah maybe sometimes we don't see that or uh, our eyes are not developed to that stage then we use logic okay we use knowledge what's the knowledge that this not this knowledge about you know value scale we apply that and if something is getting away from the light source definitely the light is not as bright as all the things that are closer to the light source okay Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this yellow, I'm gonna put it down here. What I see on the photograph that this light is pretty close to the light here. Okay. But I gotta make a difference. This shouldn't be as bright as here. Okay. Maybe by mistake, because we're trying to adjust, you know, making adjustments all over the painting, back and forth. At some point, we got the same light here and the same light here. Okay, we double check. We, uh, we're we going to get distracted anyway. You know, sometimes we got distracted, we forget to measure, we forget. Uh, the same way that we measure on the face, the width, the height. The distance between you know the eyes the nose we forget let's say this measurement between values and then all of a sudden all the values are just the same okay. now look at look at the uh, this usually what happens to highlights as soon as we blend they just go away. Let me just paint a highlight again. Okay. Hello Wanda. Hello Miriam. Hola Miriam.
I'm uh, just comparing, you know, see that I'm just seeing that I need to darken up here below the eyes. Okay, I think I got this color is pretty good to add more light to the face. And the values that I got on the hand, I think they are pretty good. You know, I would love to make this even darker. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, what else? Uh, I see some red here. I added a lizard green, some, I mean, that's not working. You see this kind of violet purple. I'm gonna paint it again with raw umber. And then I'm gonna add just uh, camion red. And maybe a touch of orange okay that's too light you know what I like uh, what I see on my paint now, this kind of loose brush strokes, I love it. I love to blend a lot, so now I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna blend or just gonna keep it just like that. I ended up blending always. Uh, I mean, it's just like I love this stage and I always blend it. few times I have painted with really bold brush strokes <clears throat> maybe today is the day to just keep those brush strokes there Okay, I think it's just too dark. More red, a bit of a lizard crimson. I'm gonna repaint again here. Clean the brush. I pick up just pure red for a touch of orange. I paint in a blend here. Hello, Ben. 
Philip is a lovely painting and interesting, interesting to hear how you see all the colors. Green, I see, see green in the original photo. Uh, hello, Joanne. Thank you. Oh, Miriam is asking me what's the color of the background. ¿Qué color es el fondo? Lo he pintado con sombra natural y negro. I said that I have painted the background with black and raw umber. First with raw umber and then black. And then I'm just slowly, slowly trying to work on saturation. Okay, seeing for example, you see the red here, you know, we all see the red here, 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 the cheeks, and the red on the nose. Okay, now I'm thinking, I'm gonna knock down the red on the cheeks here. Okay, I'm gonna keep the red on the nose like bright. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm just, I'm doing that because I'm thinking about you know, volume and how the nose have to pop forward, okay, more definitely than the than the cheeks, okay, and for that I make uh, this subtle change on color and obviously on values just to, to get that, to get this contrast. Now, Obviously, that's gonna be difficult to do it just at um, the first try. There's a lot of back and forth until you feel that you got it. Okay. Remember, you know, apply this. Always think that you got the values here. Imagine this colors, you got the red. Imagine this values here is just a, is made of 100 values. And you're gonna, you're gonna need to put down all those 100 values on the painting. And no one is gonna be closer to the other one. I mean closer, close, close, but no one, I mean, when I'm trying to say it, each one is gonna be different. It could be subtle, but it's gonna be different. I know that maybe it sounds like too much and Maybe it's impossible, but just for me, you know, having that thinking, it kind of makes me always think about the difference that exists uh, when I paint this area, you know, and I'm trying to repeat the color up here, and then I gotta go back, you know, and make an adjustment, and then I'm thinking about just this smaller area and how I'm gonna add light and shadows to that smaller area you know it, 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 and even i could do this like hey you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna work just here and here i see shadows mid-tones and lights i'm gonna add a lot of light here you know because i see a lot of light and even some highlights yeah and all the sudden it's pretty good but the value in relationship to the rest is not it's not good you know because i i got a state i get cut up in that area and now the highlights here are just as bright as the highlight here. And it shouldn't be like that. That's why I always is a good, you know, an advice uh, for me that would be always work on the whole painting, like uh, don't stay that much in one area. Okay. I have seen painters all the time just working just with, on one eye and then moving to the next eye and then all the, you see at the end the painting is amazing yeah i would say that it's just like seeing a professional just making some stunts professional what actor making some stunts okay but when it's about practicing and learning always try to keep an eye on everything and always check out the relationship between what you're painting with you know in this case you paint one eye paint a little bit of that eye and then move to the other eye 
first that's good for drawing because you know you check out the alignment of the eyes okay that's good for values in case you you're gonna you know have the same value here and here that's good to keep the relationship between the eyes and the nose you know and the mouth okay okay uh, I need to step back I see a difference between the nose and this and the cheeks you know it's pretty subtle I see too much red here yeah but I see the nose is more reddish even more reddish than the photograph yeah yeah I'm gonna knock down that okay being careful being careful That's why there is a little back and forth when we paint. Because we make a judgment and then we go back again. And then again. And then after the judgment we see, oh my god, it was better before. I'm gonna make some black and yellow here. I got some green. More yellow there. I see this green here, greenish color here. Black and yellow is just a common mixture for for a green that usually works on classical paintings, classical portraits, you know, you're gonna see that. Like, I know I have seen that everywhere when it's about a classical painting. I have hair painters saying always, you know, mix black and yellow. If you want a green that's gonna be kind of mute, it's gonna work pretty good for the skin color or and for backgrounds. Hello Spring History of Punjab. Hello Ben. I don't know if I say already. I said already hello to Ben. Thank you, Wei Wei Lioglu at ADM. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think that I should keep, you know, this, I, I should blend more or you should, should keep this brush stroke like this? You can see, you know, the brush strokes. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay, it's not like a lot of paint. We can see there, you know, that is not blended. Kainakridon rolls. This color is pretty transparent. 
I'm gonna mix it with black. some Taylor Blue here from PBO <clears throat> oh, thank you so much, Bob. I got a coffee from Bob from Robert Drinkwater. Thank you so much. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna narrow, narrow the cheek here a bit, just a bit. Ben saying it's awesome as is, but you enjoy blending. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy blending, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Maybe for today's painting, it's not going to be blending. But let me know, you're here for the blending? You're here for the blending? <laughs> It's not about blending, you know, I'm just kidding. It's just about painting. Blending or not blending. Blending or not, or not blending, I mean, well, well, it's about getting an, a, a good painting. It's about values. Always about values. Okay, but first, obviously, drawing, you know, the drawing has to be good. The drawing, the first stage is not it's not good. The second stage is not gonna work. And then after getting all the values and color, because values and color is just one thing. You can, we cannot separate the values from colors. After getting that, we think about edges. Okay.
if somebody wants to paint along, you know, with me, with a nice group on Patreon, you can join to my Patreon account. We, I have uh, different tiers. I have a tier for beginners and a tier for intermediate. Hey, oh, you know what? Okay, okay, okay. My, my son is just live on YouTube. Oh, I didn't know that. I just see a, a notification. It says, hey, you're live on... It says, like, drawing, random drawings. I say, what? Drawings? I'm just live painting. And I said, I made a mistake? It's not it's my son. <laughs> I'm going to put the link down here, you know. I gotta share it, that's my song. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he draws things for uh, for his age. <laughs> that's the channel. Okay, Chris. Thank you for, for staying here. If somebody go to my son's channel, just let you know, let him know that you're coming from here. <laughs> Can that send me, send me, you know. I wanna use that at some point. Oh, Monique is saying that she would love to see some brush strokes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I want to keep those brush strokes. Maybe the brush strokes are going to become smaller and smaller. Obviously because I'm adding more and more paint. Yeah. Chris saying I'm going to watch your son. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, they say I subscribed to him yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if my uh, uh, if my son is speaking or not I mean obviously uh, you know it's a, a Spanish channel you know look for a translator and say in Spanish hey hi <laughs> thank you anyway just kidding okay you don't need to don't need to do it.
since I adding, I mean, more, let's say, visible brush strokes, you know, I kind of need to add more color. It's just, uh, I don't know if there is a particular reason for that. Uh, it's not like we need to do it, but for me, it's just like when I see, you know, more visible brush strokes on my own paintings, I got the, the need to lay down more colors, like some, just some touches, tiny touches. And not just me, you know, I have seen this in so many paintings. And I think it's pretty nice. I think that helps a lot too, because we're adding more color. And at the end, more color is always beautiful in a painting. Okay, mm. I'm squinting a lot, yeah. try to see the value differences, I think I need to add more light here, I'm cleaning one brush, okay. more light here I see a, a little bit of this highlight on the nose. If somebody wants to support my channel, just press the like button. That would be enough. Or send me all your money. That would be good. that would be good too. <laughs> uh. Oh, Chris, saying on a PC I, I can have both YouTube channels open. Oh, <laughs> hello, Manuel. Yeah. Oh, not only say I told him you sent us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is saying I know Spanish and it is good input. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, you all. Yeah.
Thank you so much. Uh, okay, uh, I, 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 where I was, okay. I was on the eye, yeah? Yeah, I was thinking about the values around the eye. You know, I, I gotta create the illusion that this is rounded, that this is sphere beneath the lid. I'm working on, you know, making this side a little bit darker. In here too. And you got the, I got this darker, and this a bit darker, and light in the middle. It just the way that we use, we create the illusion of uh, something is spherical. Okay, the same here. Okay, a bit there in here. You just gotta be sure that, for example, this color here is a mute color. Okay. Uh, I don't want to add too much saturation there. Okay, I could add more saturation here on the light. Okay. And, you know, it's not just about light and shadow. Imagine that you got something, I got paper towel here. Light, you know, this is something rounded light, shadow, light. Okay, the thing is that in order to create more volume you can imagine that you're painting something red. It's not gonna be just about darkening up the red or light up the red. You can just knock down the red when you move into the to, to the shadow, okay, and keep the red just fully saturated on the lights. Okay, now uh, the thing is, the tricky thing is, it could be the opposite too, okay? Because it depends on the light, it depends if the light is warm or the light is cool. Okay, I know that's kind of tricky to explain, maybe to understand, but that's what happens with color. Now, uh, when I was a student, I remember I tried really hard to understand so many things, and I couldn't. And I'm not saying that everybody uh, is on the same position, but pretty sure somebody is in the same position that when I was, you know, trying to understand color theory. And I would say, you know, that think about color theory when you practice more than just color theory alone when you're just thinking about color theory, because at the end, we, you, everybody's gonna end up understanding. But this is something about practicing. Okay, and keep in mind that we move always from warmer colors to cooler colors. And we just imagine the blue and orange, okay? And everything moving to blue and everything moving to or orange at the same time from one direction to another direction in a color like uh, what a ping pong ball, ball, you know, moving from there to that. Okay, and think that in order to create the illusion of depth, sometimes you're gonna need to knock down the color, or even think that you mix the color with gray, just gray, black and white. You knock down the color. You create the illusion of depth, you know, but it's not going to be just that, okay, because it's always like you knock down a color and you saturate another color, and that's going to complete the illusion of volume. We could work the opposite way too, okay, and that happens sometimes when we have really, uh, let's say, a warm light on the face, we can have some cool colors in the shadow, yeah. That definitely could work. And when we have a cool light on the face, we have some warmer colors on the shadow. Okay. I, I, what I mean in this case, for example, that I got, we got this warm color. I can just mix violet. Okay. And put it down here. It's going to work. Okay, 
It's like for our brain is gonna think that that's natural because that happens in nature. It's just that it's not that obvious or visible. It's pretty subtle. It's just pretty obvious when we see a landscape on a sunny day, when we see the light, the sunlight, pretty orangey. Okay. That's pretty clear when we see the shadows that are pretty kind of violet or purple. Okay, for example, about the, the neck here, this area, I didn't add too much paint, but now I have a color here. Okay, and you see the color on the face is different from this color. Now I could use that. Why? Because this color is more a little bit grayish. Knock down, and this is more orangey. Okay. Hello. Oh, no. Sorry. Maybe I'm, I'm making things kind of complicated, but that's, you know, there's no easy way to explain it. The thing is that, it's, you know, the simple way that somebody told me once is just, you know, just think about warm and cool colors that's it but there's no use about that okay when you think we think we gotta think about warm cool reflected light ambient light uh, and other colors that are just next to the things that we are painting that's gonna affect how we perceive color we cannot judge one color just alone but remember somebody telling me just make it simple just think about just warm and cool Okay, and a lot of the things that you don't know, you know, you're gonna see then. And as you paint more, you wouldn't even notice, but you're gonna be painting those things. Because color theory basically put on a book what is happening, is happening in nature. Color theory it just based everything on reality. You know? I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can make a difference here, making this color a little bit darker. Just to see more clearly the edge of the face. I need some palette knife to use palette knife. I got pure white here. Step back. Yeah, that's pretty bright. Now I need some yellow.
I like this chrome yellow because uh, first it's pretty close to lemon yellow you know but lemon yellow is more transparent that's why I, I just I, I prefer this instead of lemon yellow because lemon yellow it feels like you put down you try to mix lemon yellow it kind of goes away it kind of vanish you got you gotta put more and more and more with this one it's not like that because it's a bit less transparent than lemon yellow okay I'm gonna mix coming red with chrome a touch of white let's see if I see a difference yeah that's good I think that's good You know, thinking about the face, I still have to work here, make this rounded, rounded here. Uh, I got some values that are moving on this area, some lights that I need to make, you know, the eyes more rounded. The same for the forehead. But I got this value here and this value pretty close. I gotta darken up this one. Okay. Now, what I have here is good, but I need more light here. But I gotta move, you know, to, to, to the hand. I'm mixing coming red with white and yellow chrome. Let's see if that works to make this bread a little bit lighter. Maybe I need some vermilion red. I don't have vermilion red. I mean I have it, I have, but I don't I don't have it here with me. I got all I got few colors on just uh, still on boxes and what happens that uh you know at like a few years ago I started to to film to you know record some courses in Spanish I am planning to translate those to English with a lot of work I will do it eventually but the thing, the, the thing is that I ended up having like one studio on my dad's house okay with just like exactly like a replica of my studio here brushes you know oil paints and I uh, and at the same time I got another stud studio with the same and the thing is that sometimes I need some color and I have to just pick up one color from one place to another place yeah. and until today that has been a long time since I go to my dad's house I still have some you know the last time that I went there uh, my dad he's, he was using my oil paints you know, he was like, hey, man, I needed some red, and I used it. And I said, well, okay, that's okay, you know. And, like, a uh, few months ago, he was like, hey, you know, there's no red anymore. Bring more paint. And I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. But it was just, like, 20 colors there, 20 colors here. And what happens that where he lives is uh, the the place you know the neighborhood is kind of quiet. There's not too much noise. It's pretty nice to 
and I was just on one room, I closed the door and I was recording and that was pretty clean, the recording was pretty clean. I cannot get this yellow, I'm gonna get one yellowish color there. If that happens to you that you don't get don't get the color, this is better just to wipe off that area and paint over again. Instead of trying to put more and more paint. Okay, I gotta go back to the face. <laughs> okay. okay, let's go back to the face. Now thinking about this chick, uh, how to make it rounded. Okay. Now I gotta see you got light and then it goes to shadow and you need to see a core shadow. Even maybe sometimes the core the core shadow is not too dark. Okay, but it has to be a core shadow here. Is the the area where you see that you know the light gets gets to that area and it start turning. Okay. Now, this is the point that where the lights just stop. The light is stopped there, and then it, there is shadow just and just reflected light. And then I'm adding a lighter color and blending a bit, just a bit to get this rounded more light Okay, every time that I mix a color, it's just like remember, I'm just creating more little pieces of this big puzzle. And I put it down and I think, hey, this, this piece, this little piece, it shouldn't be there. It has to be a little bit darker. And I go to the palette and I just adjust it and I put down again the color and then again. I, and I'm thinking, hey, you know, this color, I should, looking down the color, you know, because I want this form just to turn on the edge. Okay, or, or I have to add more light here, and this light has to be brighter, and I could use just a brightest color, maybe pure can be orange. Okay, and at some point you think, hey, you know, Maybe the color is not the same as the color on the photograph, but if you see that those colors are working on your painting, you can keep them, okay? We got the photograph. It's pretty nice to get really close to the photograph and copy the photograph. But I think it's not like always the goal, you know? 
especially no no when we paint the La Prima. At the end, remember that your painting is gonna stay alone, not with the photograph next to your painting. From time to time, check out your painting alone and see. Is what you got there is working? Is good? Something missing? Don't compare it with the photograph. And just you see, this is black, black. I'm mixing with. You know. Uh, it's better to have a work with a chromatic black. And, and when we get a chromatic, how we get a chromatic black? Just mixing black with any color. I I love to mix black with a and crimson. Okay. With blue, but I love more mix it with a and crimson. Uh, definitely I need to buy or, or, or find my vermilion because I'm not getting the color I want and if I add a little bit of yellow to this red I'm gonna light up the color too much and I don't think that's gonna work okay I need some green Green. Mm -hmm. John, 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 I didn't see, I didn't read the comment. With you, your wife, and your son all being great artists, is there ever any competition among yourselves? Oh, I don't think so. Oh no, maybe it could be. Hello, Matt, art lover. Uh, who knows? I never thought about that. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think between family there is no competition. Yeah? Just my wife. So. 
sometimes she's like she's like you cannot you shouldn't paint in, you shouldn't be painting landscapes and I say I mean uh, okay why because I'm painting landscapes and I said yeah but you know one million more people is painting landscapes too it doesn't matter you know <laughs> I said okay but that's in English I don't care <laughs> I just kidding, you know, she's, uh, sometimes, in a few times, she's like, you know, she's like, you know, I, I got the feeling that you're comparing with me when you paint landscapes, and I, I, I for me, it's just like, okay, I, I, I didn't even, I didn't even think about that. Uh, but I haven't tried that with uh, my son, like, they say that tomorrow I pick up and I decide to paint the same that he's painting today with the same medium. Maybe he's gonna say, hey, 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 what happens? Go back and paint your portrait with oil paints. <laughs> you know, who knows? I remember when I was a student, there was a guy, one of my friends, that he was he was pretty good, you know. The thing that, that happens that when I was a student, uh, I enjoyed, obviously, I loved painting, but I kind of, I didn't pay attention that much to all the rules about painting. And that was a mistake, obviously. I, I I thought at that time that the goal it, it was just about practice and being in, intuitive, got a lot of intuition and practice a lot. But definitely, knowledge and observation work together, and we get the better, better results when you know we paint. I want to repeat a phrase, a, a, a phrase, phrase, a phrase. Sorry, a phrase that. It's out there a lot. We paint what we know, we paint what we see. We paint first what we see and then we paint what we know. And that makes a huge difference. I didn't know when I was, you know, a student on the first on the first years. And I remember this when this friend, he was pretty good. It was like everything was working pretty good on each one of his paintings. And I was jealous, yeah. I mean, we are humans. I'm not gonna deny that. But I was, I mean, there is obviously some weight of like, when you are jealous and you're thinking, I'm gonna be better, you know, I'm gonna get to that level. And when somebody's so jealous and you know, and they say, you know, I'm gonna ruin your pain. No, that's, this, that's different, yeah. Is jealous, but in a way that put me in a position like that. Like I'm gonna compete with this guy. Why is he so good? You know. And until I uh, spoke to his uh, with him, son. I mean, once, and he was full of knowledge about color theory, about contrast, about ages. It was just, you know, a lot of that. And for me, it was like, this guy speaking Chinese. <laughs> yeah. But it was like some, I got, you know, at the end, uh, that was like, so let's say motivation for me to get better, to improve based on seeing somebody getting some nice, really good results, you know, and thinking like, hey, it's not just about, it's not about talent, it's not about that, that. it's about knowledge and practice. Yeah. Because when somebody think that maybe, oh, it's just about talent, it's just like, you know, it's just like you're seeing a, a how do you say, uh, an obstacle there. And think, what if I don't have that talent? What if I don't that 
I, I'm not that natural. But when I saw that guy that he was really good and I saw that, you, you know, for him it was just about practice and knowledge, okay, that's something that I could do, I could, could practice. And knowledge, you know, that definitely is about, about studying, about reading. Yeah. yeah, Monique, I see some green on the photograph too. Yeah. been almost two hours okay mm, let's continue I'm gonna pick up a palette knife and let's see if I can get more reddish colors just by by making this thicker and oh, oh this usually works you know when the painting is thicker it glows more any color I'm planning to darken up the fingers a bit more just to to see you know if I got pure red and it's not glowing maybe it's about contrast Okay, I'm gonna need to darken up here a bit more. I'm mixing the color here. Instead of mixing on my palette, I'm mixing the color there. Okay, I'm gonna add more green to the hair. I like it. Ok, 
see, I got chrome green here. Mm. I'll put it here. It is not a bright. It looks pretty bright. It's bright, you know, but no, it's not that much. I'm gonna put it down here. Pretty sure here it looks different. Look at that. You know what happens is that my light is up, and this is pretty close. And how you see how the light changed the color? Yeah. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna try to make this even greenish, okay? Because I love it. I think that's gonna be a nice touch. Same, you know, the same thing. In, uh, as I'm think, as I'm adding this color and thinking that, obviously, I'm not gonna move with this all the way to the other side. There's gonna be an area where this color is gonna be lighter. I mean, that's gonna be here. It's just like every little section it has a focal point. Okay. On this little area, the focal point is here. Now, I got the intention of adding this greenish too. Yeah, but I gotta decide which one is gonna be the focal point. I could add green here too, okay? But not make it as bright as this one. Or maybe I can just decide to change, knock down this one and making this brighter. Yeah, that's an option too. Okay. Adding some red. Red and green next to each other. That work pretty good. I'm gonna knock down the light on the lower eyelid. It's just too bright. I was squinting, you know, uh, when I squint down uh, my eyes and I see the photograph, I didn't see this kind of disappear. And when I do, I did that, checking out my painting, I still see this light, on the lower lower eyelid just glowing. That means that the value is not okay. going on top lightly okay okay I think I knocked down this too much again a little bit of paint Got a little bit of green here. More green here.
and let's soften this edge and that way I keep a difference between this edge and this edge if I soften that edge I can keep this edge sharp Okay, the same here soften the edge I soften the edge and I keep this uh, this edge sharp do you think maybe her face a little bit wider on my painting maybe I should narrow her face a bit a doubt here I'm gonna add in some Taylor Blue. Play some green here, some red, and some Taylor Blue. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of purple. If I mix Taylor Blue with Alistair and Crimson, I get some purple, which is a dark color. Okay, Monique, see you. Hello, Bruno. Hello, Mal Malo B. Gary saying, is there some green on her knuckles? Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Check out the greens. Hey, I mean, I'm adding some green differently. Oh, you know, I'm kind of worried about the size of the hands. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I gotta change the shape. If this finger is too straight. I don't see the knuckle here. Should be more like that. Yeah, and at the same time, I gotta just soften a few some edge, a, a bit some edges. These lights glow a lot, but the only way to, to get the light 
now it's gonna be just with the palette knife and adding thicker paint here Okay, I'm going to add some green here, I could add some greenish reflected light here. It looks grayish, yeah, kind of, kind of vanishing. This uh, I got a lot of red. The painting is wet. I add green, and since I'm trying to, you know, correct my drawing and moving the paint, it got mixed and it got some kind of grayish color. It could even if we mix red and green, we got some brown. Okay, I'm gonna check out again the size of the hand. Okay, I think I got the hands a bit bigger. Man, I don't think I'm gonna do anything about that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not even sure. Definitely tomorrow, after you know, resting my eyes, I'm gonna be able to see if the hands are big or small. In other words, if that's okay. Oh, this thumb, maybe this thumb is just. I gotta make it smaller here. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, difficult to difficult to see. You know, that's basically a problem when we paint two or three or four objects. When we paint still life, there's no worry about that. If we paint something bigger or smaller, but. We kind of know without even measuring the relationship between the hands and the face and even not even not knowing you know the the right relationship even just i mean not being aware of measurements and all of that just by eye anyone can say hey those hands looks bigger or smaller I have that doubt here, I'm gonna check out tomorrow and it could be about maybe this portion here anyway I'm pretty happy with the painting I think I got the more important about this painting that is represent the light you know, and how this light glow from from the hand to the face adding some green here a touch I think I gotta move this highlight a little bit down.
Minister von die Age of Eight. I think I'm getting to the end of the session. Yeah. Okay, mm, what is what is Painting up here on the background. Just black. I want to sing, I want to sing a song. But 
I respect you all so much, and not, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> this reflected light is too light. I just darkening up this a bit. <laughs> okay. I think uh oh thank you are uh, at Sunnyside. Oh whoa <laughs> So some Bitcoin news on the comments. Thank you Patty, thank you Bob Mr. Herb, Herb jumps in. The size of the hands are perfect in relation to the face. Thank you. Bob is saying, sing in Spanish. <laughs> Hello, Panda Horn. Don't sing. Does Rick actually think the demonetization? Oh, oh, that would happen? Yeah, I didn't know that. Wow. Okay, I think that's it for today. You know, I see a few things that I could just continue working but uh, I don't wanna just risk myself like just continue like overworking things that maybe I'm not gonna make better okay yeah because at some point sometimes uh, we paint we paint and so many times for me you know I see my painting and I think hey you know it was better 20 minutes ago I should have stopped there that happens all the time you know and sometimes I know that I have to continue 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 and it's not okay and I put more time I like it right now okay I would love to add some glazes yeah for sure like uh, for example darken up here a bit all this area here but I don't want to add more paint I love the greens. It's something that I would love to push them a bit more. But I don't want just look like my eyes go there, you know, to see all those glowing green all around. It's beautiful, but the problem with, with a color that's beautiful, that's gonna call for attention. And we don't need that here. We gotta keep the focal point. The focal point is just the face okay the hand the hands the face and even that I'm thinking that this color this green color is beautiful I just have to have to stop there okay Or maybe this thumb is uh, kind of thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could be there, could be here. about this one I think I make this too small it's not a, it's not that small this thumb thumb by the way it's, it's okay it doesn't affect that much the paint Okay, yeah, I think that's it for today, okay. Yeah. Mm, just double checking. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much everybody for being here.
okay i hope you enjoyed the process oh my god i see something <laughs> yeah this area here i gotta i gotta move it a little bit there here i think okay use that i think and you know i go live once a week if you're new to my channel yeah please consider subscribe and you know that everybody just feel free to ask me any question during the live stream and yeah yeah just that okay that's it thank you so much now i go yeah bye take care you all thank you for being here thank you bob for the coffee and see you next week see you all next week okay bye